The briefing that Annalisa gave me and the team was, um, could I give um, some personal perspective on what I've learnt um, spending the last 20, 21 years in corporate life? So I have spent 21 years at Nielsen and I have had a crucible moment, we talked about that yesterday, so like a defining moment in every assignment. So this is a very, very personal perspective of um, how I started and what I've learnt um, along the way. So like every good story, I would like to start at the beginning. So I am um, what is known as a BBC. So that is a British-born Cypriot. <laughs> So I am the daughter of economic migrants who came to the UK in the 1950s. You can see a mum and dad there. Um, educated at the LSC, been at Nielsen for 21 years. I do have a husband and a daughter and there they are. Now the relevance to this background is that I do think you are influenced and defined by where you come from. And I have learnt different things from the different people who have influenced me. My dad, um, hard work ethic. Please get educated if you do nothing else. Education can never be taken away from you and you are not entitled to anything. You have to earn everything. My mother was nurturing a homemaker, she still is, but you know she was very financially and emotionally and intellectually dependent. She did not have any independence and observing her as a little girl, I always thought, I don't want to be a woman in that position, and that did influence me um, a lot as time went on. Husbands, you know, they can be quite important. The teamwork um, <laughs> does help. And we were talking earlier with some of the ladies, you know, taking out the bins, carrying the luggage. No, I'm only kidding. That is important, but um, I do think when you do combine family and the corporate life, um, having a guy who supports you, um, it does help. I think that's the reality. Bosses, I've had lots at Nielsen. Believe me, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And um, the key lesson for me there is that you can learn from the bad bosses too. I had one boss who was, um, I would call him a machine. So he was, didn't have a lot of emotion. But you know what he did taught me, being a Mediterranean woman, he said to me, Eleni, you know, the problem with you is that you confuse emotion with passion. There is a place for passion in corporate business, but try to keep the emotion out of it. And I know that's tough, and some of us are going to say that, yeah, you should be able to be emotional sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. But do you know what? He did teach me a lesson, and I did learn from that. And in a lot of tricky situations, I did try to show the passion and keep the emotion out of it. And I think that did help me, actually, um, over the last few years. And as for my daughter, I'll talk about her at the end. So um, my first job was in um, Cyprus and then Dubai. I worked for one year at one of our clients, Unilever. And I had a couple of um, defining moments here, or crucible moments. The first was I wasn't planning this assignment. Somebody approached me, I was on holiday in Cyprus, and asked me to join Nielsen. And I was a graduate, and I thought, well, you know, the world's my oyster, why not? And I started and never looked back. So my counsel to you would be not every opportunity is a planned one. And sometimes something will come in front of you and just, just grab it. Now, there's a lot of science behind managing your career. I also think sometimes just be in the right place at the right time. And then the other humbling moment for me was we ran some focus group discussions with women in Saudi Arabia, in Jeddah and in Riyadh. And I um, accompanied my... I had to go with my husband because Western women can't travel there and I wore the abaya and everything. And um, having left the London School of Economics, I was full of changing the world and making it right for women everywhere. And these Saudi women surprised me. They were educated, articulate, and they challenged my Western view of the world. Now, I'm not saying that I had the same views as them, but they definitely made me think I should respect all perspectives. So I had spent the last few years at uni thinking one way, and these ladies made me think, OK, there isn't necessarily one truth, there is many perspectives, and that was a big learning for me. Next one, Russia, managing director, first MD to Russia. That was tough. The first year, our business grew by 100%, the top line. Second year, the economy collapsed. If um, those of you are old enough to remember, it came crashing down like a stack of cards. And um, that little bundle I'm holding is was my daughter. And... Um, I do recall that the crucible moment was that we had to um, release people from the business to survive. 
And um, I personally did that myself. And I remember that a small group came to me and said, um, please stop firing people. The rest of us will take a 25% pay cut, but keep the rest of us. And that's what we did. And the business survived and it's very successful today. So the crucible moment is do the tough stuff yourself and you can learn from tough assignments sometimes um, more than the good ones. So it's not the sexy stuff that you, at face value is always where you learn. Okay, who knows Dutch people or is Dutch? So they're pretty direct, right? So this was my next assignment. Before I arrived, a delegation of three Dutch males from our Dutch business approached the president of Europe, Nielsen, and said, that woman you're sending, we don't want her. She's too young, she's not Dutch, she doesn't have the right experience, and she's a woman. <laughs> that, now, crucible moment, rejection really bloody hurts. Um, and I did take it personally, I did find it tough, um, but I wasn't defeated. I was sponsored by a senior male executive who said, you have to accept who we've chosen. And really, I did, I think, over time, we, we turned around the business together. And my crucible moment was do what you say and say what you do and communicate. So I got there. We had some very frank discussions. And I said, the business is in a mess. I'm here to help. You're with me or you're not with me. It's your choice. And um, actually, um, when I left this assignment, it was probably the most emotional leaving party I've ever done because the rejection and then the loyalty that I got afterwards was really, really powerful. UK and Ireland, the next um, assignment. This one was pretty big and my crucible moment was I can't just walk around a room and personally influence everyone. I'm now running a company that has several hundred people and I need to achieve success through others. So I had to adapt my leadership style because um, I do like to talk and make an impression and I, I, you can't do that when there's hundreds of people. So that was a crucible moment. The other one was um, this man here. He was 84, I think, when he visited Oxford and he was called um, Art Junior, which I think is fantastic, that he was called Junior and he was 86. But he is the founder, um, senior Nielsen's son. Um, he's passed away now, but he came to visit us. It was his last international visit, and he told us about the history of Nielsen and how they started and how they promoted women and um, the concept of the market share and how it was invented. But it was a real privilege to spend three days with him, and it made me remember the importance of heritage and not just the future. So you've got to build on, on history um, to, to move forward. And the other really big one I do want to share is that men fail differently. Um, during this assignment, I had my first, um, I would say, failure. We lost a big client. Um, I was devastated. I tendered my resignation. Um, they told me not to resign and try to turn it around, which I then did and won a, an award a year later. But there's something you can learn from that. There is that men fail differently. He externalized the failure. I internalized it. So who's right? I think there's something we can learn from these guys. <laughs> then my next role was a transformation role. It was come out of running countries and regions. And um, this diagram here is what my boss drew on a napkin in a restaurant. And he said, I want you to transform our client service organization. I think you're going to have to improve it, change the service offering, and look at the talent. Um, that was terrifying. Um, because I had gone from being the boss and running lots of people to suddenly having to influence people. And my crucible moment was, don't be afraid to take authority, um, even if the reporting lines on the org chart don't end up at you. Um, if you have the experience and the credibility, you can influence people and, and people will follow. And um, don't fear a new direction. Even if it's completely different to what you've done before, have the confidence to take it and, um, and move on. And I have run out of time, so I'm, I'm going to wrap up. My current job is actually in the area of outsourcing, and we set up hubs globally. My message to you is um, try and stay relevant in your institutions or organizations. So I had, um, Monica said it yesterday. She said, it is your responsibility to understand the strategy and how the world around you is moving. I realized that we had built a global relationship with a company called Tata Consultancy. It was a 2.5 billion deal, it runs to 2020. 
I thought, hmm, now either I should be afraid of that or I should be in the middle of it. I decided to be in the middle of it, and that is my um, current role. That's a summary of all the insights. I can forward that to you, but this is like my crucible moments on one slide. And um, my final words are, um, you know, there is better awareness. We're here today. You asked me to talk. Loads of um, distinguished um, speakers. Um, it, you know, there's legislation in the Western world to protect us and, and many things. But all of the boards, including Nielsen's and in the corporate world, remain male-dominated. So why? We've talked for the last day and a half about why and what we can change. My message would be, I do actually like one of the things Sheryl Sandberg said. No one's mentioned her the last couple of days. But she does say lean in. She does say just get to the table and then change things. And um, it did make me think about the deselection that happens. But it's so easy for me just not to go there. But how about going there and actually changing the rules of the game? And I, I think things like today do help to give you that confidence. Mentor and be mentored. Everyone said it. If someone asks you to come somewhere like this, do it. A couple of my mentees are actually here giving me moral support in the um, audience. You've probably met. And I am going to close with my daughter, who I believe is the next chapter. And um, look, mine was the right to education and independence and a place at the corporate table. Maya, that's my daughter, she takes all of that for granted. She's an A-grade student, big deal. She doesn't think it's a big deal that she's getting a good education. But she's decided to be an athlete and an elite rower. Where the hell did she get that from? <laughs> A-grade, rower, and she's really environmentally aware. These things were not on my agenda. So I'm an optimist. I think that the new generation is going to reset the boundaries, new boundaries. And um, for me, she is the biggest inspiration. Thank you.